Many people don't consider competitive horseback riding to be a real sport, but did you know it's the only Olympic game that requires men and women to compete on the same field? And it's also a sport that requires you to learn how to communicate in a language that doesn't have any words. Most people grow up with sports as a strong influence in, in their lives, but could you imagine if these activities weren't considered sports to other people? That's something that I've struggled with with horseback riding. I've been horseback riding my entire life, and it's something that's ingrained in my DNA. My mom is also a coach and loves to ride. I'm also the youngest professional horseback rider in Washington State. Competitive horseback riding is a sport. Webster's Dictionary defines a sport as something that requires physical exertion, skill, and requires a team or individuals to compete against each other for entertainment. I think competitive horseback riding definitely falls under this description. Today I'll discuss why competitive horseback riding is a sport, how it requires physical exertion, skill, and the different ways that you can compete in competitive horseback riding. So um, contrary to popular belief, competitive horseback riding does take a lot of physical exertion. Most people think of horseback riding as trail rides along a beach or mountain trail that you do on your vacation. These horses that you use when you rent a horse at a vacation destination are usually old or malnourished and definitely it's not the same as what I do in a competitive setting. Um, what they're doing is just following along and what I do is a little bit different. Competitive horseback riding that I participate in is the hunter-jumper style. Hunters are based on a 16th century sport, sport of ho fox hunting. There's lots of different kinds of disciplines of horseback riding, but I am a hunter-jumper. It takes more than most people assume to compete at the level I do. A lot of people think it's just the horse doing the work, but the rider is actually doing most of the work. Steering, for instance, takes years to master, um, and jumping takes even longer than that. There are people that ride for lifetimes and can still improve. Horseback riding takes a lot of stamina because it's a kinetic exercise. You are firing and holding muscles versus exerting a lot of energy, like pushing. And it requires a lot of concentration on multiple tasks at one time. Now that we've talked about the different strengths that horseback riding requires, now we'll talk about the skills. As I touched on earlier, going simply forward, backwards, and left to right can be extremely difficult on a horse. Horses are animals, so they think for themselves and have different moods and personalities. 5 plus 5 doesn't always equal 10 when it comes to horseback riding. Depending on how the horse is feeling that day or the horse's mood, the cues can be changed in an instant. The most skillful part of horseback riding, I would say, is jumping. Jumping requires you to measure how far away you are from an obstacle while rating your speed at the same time, which is extremely difficult. So hopefully, already I've talked about a lot more than you thought there was to competitive horseback riding. Um, and there are three different categories of competitive horseback riding that my style offers. Um, hunters, jumpers, and equitation. The first category it, I'm going to talk about is hunters, and that is based off of a easy pattern, it's usually pretty simple, that is judged on the horse's form and is scored from 1 to 100 on the horse's athleticism and ability and the overall smoothness of the pattern. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is equitation. It's usually over a slightly harder pattern that tests some um, skills from the rider and horse and is judged on the rider's form and is also scored from 1 to 100. And a lot of the time there are different phases to equitation classes. They um, test different uh, abilities that the riders need to possess to be good competitive horseback riders. And the last kind of class we're going to talk about is completely different. Jumpers are timed and you can acquire faults. Um, you can acquire faults by either going over the time allowed that is allowed for the pattern or going and hitting a jump and knocking the top rail off of any of the obstacles. 
So hopefully I have convinced you that competitive horseback riding is a real sport because it does take physical exertion. As I said, it is an extremely hard kinetic muscle to use when you're competitively horseback riding and it also requires a lot of skill because it requires you to multitask and learn how to control an animal that is constantly changing because it has its own thoughts and feelings. And I hope that next time you consider an obscure sport to be a little bit harder than you assume because a lot of the times if you're good at something, it looks easy. So hopefully there's a little more than you thought to competitive horseback riding and I convinced you that it's a real sport.